Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to to episode four of Dance Dance the Source. Let's go ahead and get started in three, two, one, go. God, he's so pretty. Oh. So I love the fact that he, you know, once again, going into last week's episode and now into this week's, I still love the fact that he cut his hair because of the fact is, once again, this is a new journey for Junpei. And, and so, of course, he needs a fresh new do. It suits him. I mean, it's making him like, oh, he's not this boy anymore. He's becoming a man. And the man that he envisions who can, you know, in a way, have everything and such. I mean, at first, you know, it was hard for him to be in, like, two different worlds, but now I think he's gonna multitask it in a good way, you know? I, I just, I hope, like, later on in this series that he's able to, you know, try to get along with his friends again. I mean, you know, yeah, his one friend from last week doesn't really want to hear into his bullshit, but I just hope that there is an episode or a moment later on in this series that we do get an apology because I think Junpei deserves it. He deserves a fucking apology. How Leo's you deserve a fucking apology after last week? It's okay. Huh? You one hundred percent sure about this, all right? So that's why. So basically saying the prince is more of a challenging role. You're serious? Yeah. 
That look in his eye. Very <laughs> determined. Seriously, look how happy he is! Fuck you! But hey, even pipe dreams can be accomplished. Mm. Mm, it's a very doggy dog world competition. <laughs> Because <laughs> of that to see short. Yeah, you know she has to come to make sure you're absolutely 100% sure that you're going to do this. Yes, you need to perfect them no matter what. Like, you can't be like, oh, okay, I think I'm good at it, and then let me try something else. No.
Go ahead, try. Try one more time. Mm -mm. Yep, so of course, they're automatically going to have the corrections right, unlike you. That's what happens when you eat, sleep, and breathe it. You sure about that? You really shouldn't grind your teeth like that, bro. Going back to school. And you only done one of them. Well, that says a lot right there. That and that flashback in the beginning of the episode. You gotta feel bad for him, though. Is Junpei still there?
He's been training his ass off, though. Jesus Christ, that ain't even enough sleep for me. <laughs> oh, God, don't say that. It's so mean. Yeah, try it. Oh, he looks so good. I can't. My heart. Yeah, I don't even think you were acting. You were all up in that. He's going to be in there, isn't he? Still the same. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Not in a way that you wanted to actually tell them, though. Yeah, because, you know, never had a man cry over a man dancing like that before, right? And that really just, once again, that fucking touched me last week. Like, oh my god, that was a moment that, like, everybody was talking about. And I need another moment like that again. I kind of ship it. Mm, God. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. See, and once again, it's worse because of who they all play in My Hero Academia. I'm like, oh, shit. Damn, I'm really shipping that shit. Okay. I mean, but yes, going back to last week's episode, to finally see him cry and going into a week where it's like, okay, it's okay for men to cry and for men to have feelings and to not always be this strong, buff person or with a strong personality that men are usually supposed to have and that men can have different types of feelings. So, once again, I need these two to kind of get along and have a nice friendship slash partnership. This episode kind of went by fast, though, as well. I mean, because, damn, one minute we were at the opening, then we're at the eye catch, kind of, and now we're at the end of the episode. But, oh, between... Junpei and what's her face and how they were dancing together and how she was so flustered and he was all into it that wasn't acting that was actually how he felt oh my god like oh you know when you watch something and you can feel that tension that romantic chemistry oh I felt that and it felt good like oh my god but between Leo and Junpei oh I felt that too I just mmm I kind of now want to see a ballet where we have two leads, two male leads dancing. I think that would be so beautiful. Like just that moment of like when Leo like grabbed his neck, like that like one moment where his arm, his whole body was reaching out and, and that, like, you could have just paused right there and we could have just had a moment with that. Like, oh my God, that little freaking scene. I can't even imagine what the fuck that looked like in the manga, but I bet you it was just as dark as that was in this episode. Two, Leo's backstory, especially with his grandmother, literally, like, God, should I use that word? I mean, because in a way, it it really signified that, yes, she was doing that to him and being very hard on him. And that's why maybe he doesn't have the greatest relationship with his grandmother, because you only get to see from what they say in backstories is that she was physically and possibly even mentally abusing him and beating him down and up for it, saying that, you know, you're not like this. You need to be like this. How, like, okay, I've only experienced something very similar like this once and one, like, one time only, and this is, like, typically, um, with any type of teacher that you've had from elementary school up into high school or a type of coach, where sometimes they don't look at their quote-unquote students or, um, teammate, student, uh, whatever type, how a coach looks at their athletes or how the teachers look at their students. They don't look at them as, like, people or whatever. They look at them as objects and stuff. And sometimes with athletes and coaches, the coaches will go a little step too far. And this could be the same thing with ballet instructors, um, any kind of dance instructor where they don't look at them as humans, they look at them as objects. So it's just like, oh, you're just here for my pleasure and it's like that. Not not like saying pleasure in a bad way or even a good way, more of like, okay, I'm going to physically beat this shit into you until I say you're good enough. Like, it could be like day one you come in and he says, oh, like, you're all good, but you can be great. 
Or when you have, like, a family member or a parent or whatever saying, like, oh, you're good, but you can be great. Like, I know you can do more than this and such. But his grandmother went a step too far. There is a line, and she has crossed that line, like, really physically, physically beating him and putting him in these awkward, like, not even these, uh, in awkward positions, just in poses and stuff that could possibly really hurt him. There was a video, um, I think this was like several years ago, and when Facebook was still popular, and then this, and funny enough, like very recently, the video also refer- resurfaced on Twitter as well. I don't know if it was a cheerleading practice or if it was a ballet practice, but there were um, the co captains and everything training or fucking with some of the other cheerleaders and what they did was so they were doing splits and because uh, this one girl was like literally doing the split but like having both of her legs like this and she is out like this and because she didn't go down enough that they wanted her to go they literally put their body weight on her so imagine let's say this girl is like 130 to maybe 150 pounds and the person who was behind her was a boy and usually because the boys has a lot more muscle than the girl the the guy could be about like 150 to 60 to almost 200 pounds of muscle that is a lot of muscle that you're putting on someone else to physically almost hurt them and it got so bad that I think I don't remember really what happened but I think there was, like, an investigation or something. Because, like I said, it started on freaking Facebook on a random video. And the next thing you know, it was on Twitter. And, and it blew up to the point where, like, I, I do think that they had to call in police. And they had to investigate it and such. Because it got really bad. Because it was not only one girl getting hurt. It was a whole bunch of girls and even guys that were really getting hurt because of this... Um, the cheer, uh, the cheer, the, yeah, the cheer captain and the cheer coach doing this to these, you know, students and stuff. So who knows um, if there are any other people in the world who are like this. And it's just wrong. It's really, really sick and wrong. And I, I hope we don't get another backstory on Leo about that. But something tells me that we will probably get more. And I feel like it's just going to be even sadder the more and more that we go into it. But I really just hope that later on in the series we do get a really nice happy friendship with these two. I love these boys so much. They're just so freaking good together. How, like I said, I need, 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 need a dance with these two together where they are both the leads opposites. How they could do like a Sherlock freaking home side with ballet type thing and I would fucking eat that ish up. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episode four of Dance Dance Sister. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And of course, I will see you guys officially, y'all, next Friday for episode five. Bye, guys.